Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King. And today I'm gonna to be giving you part five of What If Naruto was broken by the people that you love. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual. Share this to all of your friends in social media platform. And also, guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of What If Naruto had the deadliest bloodline over on Anime King 3. And enjoy that, guys. And if you're new, yes. I indeed have three channels I'm making and making two and making three, which I post what if on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the making family. And thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last time we left off, Sasuke went to Byakuya as he wanted a weapon to kill a demon. As Byakuya told him that he was talking about hollows, he thought that is what Sasuke was talking about. As he got a Zanpakuto for him, it was a Zanpakuto from Renji who had fallen in battle. As he handed over to Sasuke and told him to use it with great care and pride, he had to learn how to master Bankai. As Byakuya would teach him, due to the blood oak pack, he would help him this once. Meanwhile with Naruto, he told Hinata she could not go. As the fox had made a valid point, if she went out on her own, she would be doomed. Not to mention she ran away from Kanoha. So he stopped her. As he told her that she would be coming with him. Both her and Nell went off for the night. As he went to go get some water, seeing that they were resting up. As Yujito spoke to Naruto. As he was curious why she was still alive despite... The Akatsuki having her for so long. She told him the embarrassing truth about her. What the Akatsuki used her for. Given that it was not an order where they had to take in all the tail pieces. She thought that Naruto looked at her with disgust but he did not. He was worried for her as she was surprised. That was a scene that Hinata came back to see. With Naruto kissing. Yujito on the forehead and hugging her. As she instantly went in tears. As Nell thought that Naruto had somehow hurt Hinata. As her child man reacted, as she attacked Naruto, and later on apologized. The group made their way, as they arrived towards the clearing. As they looked up on the places they made their way inside, things went to hell rather quickly. Naruto was angry at Hinata as she almost got Nell hurt because she did not see the weapons. She had her Byak gun, so how could she not see them? They continued to make their way. Hinata did not see them pop up, but she was behind the group so she was fast enough to knock. Both Naruto and Yujito out of the way. When they turned, they saw her on their own and she was bleeding. As Naruto grabbed her, he flashed towards her room with nothing but speed breaking everything in his path. Inside the room, there was an old man who healed Hinata. As the man introduced himself as Yamamoto, as he brought her to her room to rest, he was the one that Naruto came here to find after all. As he was going to help Naruto gain Bankai for his blade. He also told Naruto that Hinata could not see the weapons because Zabuza made sure to hide them from Kikigenkai's eyes. So she could not see them no matter what she do. As Naruto felt horrible, seeing that he berated her for not seeing them and now he found out. Meanwhile, Shino was trying to talk some sense in the Kiba to stop this. As he would not listen to him, Hinata had been a slave for their marriage. He had been rather unkind to her because she was just so dead. Her eyes were always lifeless and there was no joy in her face. So his rash tone came out and he was always angry. She knew had plugged with him to just let her go. But Kiba was against it that he would not let her go no matter what. Also, Shikamaru apologized to Ino. He had forced her hand for her to make her choice when she was with Naruto. As he could see that she really wanted to be with Naruto. 
but he was jealous and stubborn and he did something stupid. He knew that Naruto would not forgive him for what he did but still. He want Ino to be happy as he saw that she was crying these days a lot. Every time she heard about Naruto and something was wrong, she cried a lot about him. Sometimes she went in a state where she just wanted to be alone and she cried. So he figured that she should be happy with the one that she loved. As he told her to go and be with Naruto and he wouldn't stand in your way. She thanked him for that. As she was going to make her way off to find him and return him back to Konoha even if he didn't love her. She had to make him be happy once again because they all put him through so much he didn't deserve it one bit. So yeah guys that's basically that's what left off you guys can switch across the playcheck to first sub so this to begin this new episode. To achieve Bankai for your son Pakuto Naruto. What is Bankai said Naruto? Yamamoto held up a finger. Ah in that lies a story he said. Nell bounced up and down. Yay story time she said. Yamajiji he's gonna tell us a story. As he gave her a kindly look at being adjusted as Yamajiji. Bankai, our final release is a state for your Zanpakuto that once achieved can increase your power several times over. Before Bankai there is a form of Shikai which means to release. While Bankai means to release again, this Sabuza was able to achieve rather easily. Naruto pulled out the Lord Zanpakuto, so I don't have to worry about Shikai he said. Yamamoto nodded, however you must pass a series of trials by one of my proje to make sure that you're worthy of wheeling such a power before we can begin training for your Bankai. As Naruto plays out with the blade, as he sipped the last amount of his teeth, I understand Yamamoto san he said. So when must I begin my first trial he asked. The man snapped his finger as a dark hole appeared behind him. As a gentle breeze spread through the area, we can begin with the first trial if you like right now. Thank you said Naruto, but there's something I must take care of first. I need to speak with Inata before I start. May I have a moment he said. The elder smiled in understanding, as he waved away the portal with another click of his fingers. You may go speak to the young girl before we start. I'll keep your friends entertained until you return. As Naruto bowed respectfully, he then made his way towards the room. As Naruto entered the room, as he went in and sat down in the bed, as she was asleep, calmly breathing. Hinata-chan, he said. She stirred a bit as her eyes slowly opened. Hinata was surprised. For the first time since they reunited, he called her Chan. Looking up at his face, she noticed a sad look in his eyes as she instantly felt fear, thinking that someone had gotten hurt because of her. Naruto, is everyone alright? I. I'm sorry, I didn't see the traps before they sprung. I. She hung her head as her tone was filled with nothing but despair, as she feared for the worse. I don't understand. I feel so stupid and useless, she said. As she looked up at him, tears in her eyes. You must hate me, she said. I know, I hate myself. Hinata felt the arm went around her shoulder. To her shock and amazement, he pulled her into a hug. Despite everything, I can never truly hate you, and I never want to hear you say that you hate yourself. Everyone is fine thanks to you. You saved us back there. I feel like such a fool. On the way I treated you, he said. As he pulled back, I was cruel and for that I apologize. I must have hurt you greatly. She shook her head. It's alright Naruto-kun, she said. Why? said Naruto. She was confused by that. As she tilted her head to the side, what was he trying to ask? I know the reason why you married Kiba. You did it for Hanabi and Konohamaru. But yet still, I've been so cold towards you. Why do you still love me after all this time he asked. Because I still can't get past the fact that you did what you did despite the reason why you did. And I still feel such anger and bitterness towards it. And because I couldn't release that anger and bitterness. I blamed you for every small thing that came our way. No matter how much time has passed between us. I will always love you she said. You may think that you've changed so much that you're not worthy of being loved. But you're wrong. Nell Chan love you as the way you are. And so do I. Any pain I have suffered or felt is nothing compared to the pain I've conflicted on you three years ago. As tears start to stream down her face. I'm so sorry for that she said. I just hope one day that you can forgive me. 
The last three years have been torture for me, especially not being able to be with you. It's not a question of forgiveness, Mr. Chan said Naruto, as he continued. Knowing the truth now, there is nothing to forgive. But you have to understand, I have given up on my feelings. Two years ago, so it's difficult for me to find them once more. As you can see, I'm not the same man I was three years ago. And you may not like or love the man that stood in front of you now. If you truly take your time to know me as I am right now. She shook her head rapidly, and he was reminded of when they were kids. I don't care who you think you are right now, she said. You will always be my Nurutakan, she said. He stiffened a bit as she said my Nurutakan. Your feelings are still inside of you. They're just buried. She smiled warmly as Nell. Laughter was heard from outside. Hmm. It seems that Yamamoto was making good on his promise. But I know they still exist. But I see how you are with Nell-chan. I can see the love you have for her. Hinata smiled wistfully as she looked down. And even if you're not able to find any room in your heart for me, it's alright, she said. But no, I will always love you no matter what. And I will always be here for you. As Nurt looked in her tear-filled eyes, as his mind started to go over everything, the reason why she did what she did, doing that for her sister and Kunahamru, the pain that she must have gone through, and nothing but love in her eyes as she looked at him. A love that has not dwindled over the past three years, despite everything, even now, even as he blamed her for everything earlier, she apologized but yet that love did not dwindle once. As he just looked at her, Hinata, he said, as she looked up towards him, I'm sorry. As he moved in, Hinata was caught off guard as his lips captured hers. Her eyes widened as his lips moved. That tension only lasted for a second, though, as she melted, she melted into his embrace as she enjoyed it. After a minute, he pulled away from a now breathless Hinata. And for the first time in three years, he smiled at her. I think I can find some room for someone else inside my heart than Nell hinata he said. She broke down in tears as he held on to her, as she cried. Meanwhile, a certain pink Hirokunowichi was making her way through the forest in an attempt to reconcile with Naruto. After coming to a stop, Sakura flopped in frustration as she thought to herself, Damn it, Sakura, you're completely lost in these woods. Why didn't I think this out more carefully? I was in such a rush to leave and find Ruto. I didn't give it much of a thought, and as to how I was going to find him. I should have asked Kakashi Sensei if I could borrow Pakon to sniff out where Ruto was. Damn it. The moon was high in the sky now. There really was no point in heading back. Well, it's too late now. All I can do is get out of this forest and find a town. If I'm lucky, maybe someone will have some trucker dogs I could use. She heard something behind her, she grabbed a corner and twists. Pressed her body against a tree. Something was coming towards her fast. As she moved from behind the tree. The thing, white and furry, jumped right towards her. Before she could lash out with her kuna as she saw it. As she collapsed to the ground, the thing on top of her. Licking her face. Did you get your Akamaru? Akamaru bark. Yes, Kiba. Akamaru got me. Now you mind calling him off, please? Once Kiba came up to the scene, he realized who Akamaru had caught. As he apologized. And helped her up off the ground. Sorry about that, Akamar sniffed out someone that he knew, and I thought it was someone else. I didn't recognize it was you. That's okay, she said. Wait, why are you two out here anyways? I'm looking for my wife, he said. Sakura blinked, looking rather confused. Hinata? Why would she be out here? Kiba expression hardened. She left me a few days ago to go after that filthy bastard blonde teammate of yours. Sakura fist clenched tightly as she resists the urge not to knock. Kiba lights out for referring to Naruto in such a way. But the news that Hinata was out here and had several days start on her was not a good news to Sakura at least. Sakura knew of Hinata long last in love for Naruto and could claim him for herself if she got the chance. She looked at Kiba and then down towards Akamaru and realized they were the answer to her current problems. Akamaru could sniff out Naruto's trail and maybe if all went well she could beat Hinata to him first. Sakura was broke from her train of thought as Kiba asked. Why are you out here, Sakura? She quickly made an excuse. I am on a mission for Lady Snelly. She wants Naruto to phone and return as quickly as possible. Kiba looked to left and right. So she sent you. Where's your tracker dog? Yes, yeah, she sent me. She thought I was the best candidate. Because I and Naruto have been friends for so long. 
She then chuckled cheapishly. I saw my tracker dog. I kind of lost him. Say, Kiba, since we are both out here, and you're looking for Hinata, and she's going after Naruto, that means we can probably team up and try to complete both of our missions together. He thought about it. Well, I guess that'll be okay, he said. Plus, if Hinata is with Naruto, maybe you can convince her to return back home. Because it would be better for Naruto if you did. What's that supposed to mean, Kiba? asked Sakura. Kiba clenched his fist. Because if Hinata is with him and she won't return home, I'm going to kill the both of them. As his tone was dripping with venom. Come on, let's get moving, he said. Like he said nothing about murdering. Hinata and Naruto meant to go. Sucker was shocked. The man in front of her was not the Kiba Inazaka that she remembered. And he wanted to go up against Naruto? Time skip. Sasuke was rather shocked to find a campsite off the roadside. And to be more shocking, who he found there was none other than Eno. As he jumped from a tree, Eno, what are you doing? She dropped the firewood in her arms as she turned towards him rather quickly. Sasuke? That would be me, he said. Now tell me, what are you doing out here, he said. She noticed it was a blade strapped to his back. First, tell me what you're doing out here. I'm looking for Naruto. I guess you're doing the same as well, said Sasuke, as Eno hid the smile that was about to come up. She could probably use him to help trap Naruto, as she offered. Then, why don't we team up, she said. At Kanoha, Snather was beyond frustrated, as she read over the report. So, now Sakura, Eno, Kiba, they all have left as well. Yes, Hokage-sama, Shizune said. A bit anxious of her master reaction to the news. Snaddy crushed her decks with just a fist. At this rate, I won't have any shinobis left in the village. With all of his friends going after that blonde brat. And it would just give Donto and the council more ammunition to call out for his blood. I'm not sure if you can call Sakura, Ino, and Kiba friends of Naruto anymore, Lady Snaddy. Said Shizune. Snaddy sighed as she rubbed the hand on her face. She dismissed Shizune. She didn't want to be bothered for the rest of the evening. Those three were going after Naruto. And they all may rue the day that they chose to do that. Luckily, her bottle of sacred survived. As she pulled it out, this was bad. Time skip. Hinata stood beside Naruto as she was holding onto his arm. The both of them looked towards a dark, pitch black portal that not even her Byakuen can see inside of. So, what exactly is on the other side of this thing? Yamamoto simply shrugged. All I can tell you, Naruto, is that your first instructor is waiting for you on the next side, and do not underestimate him. He may seem like a lazy fool, but he was also one of my first students. Naruto released Hinata hand slowly as he unsheathed his giant blade. As he stabbed it in the floor, he then looked towards Hinata and pulled her into a tight embrace before he planted a kiss right in her lips, leaving her breathless. Nell just asked, what was that as she was told that it was a kiss, as she turned towards a very seething anger, Yujito, and a rather amusing Yamoto, who had to explain to her what a kiss was. So does that mean that Naruto Gun is mad at Hinata-chan anymore? Asked Nell. Naruto smiles he kneeled down right in front of Nell, as he ruffled her here. No, I'm not mad at Hinata-chan anymore, and you'll be a good girl while I'm gone, okay? Nell will, said Nell. As Naruto picked up his blade, soon, he heard a voice, soon Naruto, you and I will be one. He put on his mask as he stepped. He was roughly thrown out the other side as Naruto stumbled. With a small girl, he fixed himself up. As he looked, he was on a small beach. As he looked around confused, there was many palm trees and a jungle over to the side. As he noticed there was a small shack right at the end, as he pulled off his mask, Oi! Anyone here? He asked. There's no need to shout, a voice said. As Naruto turned, there was a man there in a hammock between two palm trees. As Naruto walked towards a man who eyed him as well. He had grey eyes and long wavy brown hair that was tied in a ponytail and bangs that framed left side of his face, strange pinwheel hairpins and thin facial hair on his mouth and cheeks. As he was wearing a pink kimono, as he rose and let his sandal feet hang over the edge, as he yawned. And you are? 
Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze, I was sent here to receive training for my Sampakuto from Yamamoto. Are you the guy, said Naruto? The man gave a small noisy jump right off his hammock. Shonsui, Kuroko, at your service, he said. As Naruto noticed the man had two swords strapped to his body, as Shonsui looked towards Naruto's blade, a ghost of a smile came in the corner of his lips. So, you're here to finish. Was that was a good not? You mean this Bankai thing, right? said Naruto. As he placed Zambok to on his shoulder with relatively ease, Shunsui chuckled as he pulled both of his blades out. But first, you must prove your worthiness. Alright, so what's this test, said Naruto? It's simple, really. You need to kill me before I kill you, that's all. That doesn't seem fair, said Naruto. You already got this Bankai thing, I don't. You're right. If I did use my Bankai, it'd be unfair. But I'm not gonna use it. My Shukai should be strong enough for this test. Now watch closely, he said. When the flower wind rages, the flower god roars. When the wind of the heaven rage, the god of the underworld sneers. What the hell, said Naruto. A second later, a bright light forced Naruto to close his eyes. When he was able to see once again, he saw. The man's swords had turned into a huge, heavily curved, black Chinese scimitars with silver edges. The hilt were the same but they now had long, red tassels floating down in the end. I would quit staring and concentrate Naruto Uzumaki, Namikaze, because I would come at you with the intent to kill. As Naruto swallowed thickly at that, I'm not afraid, he declared. We shall see. Now, let us begin then. The ear grew thick with power as the man extended both of his blades to each side. I should warn you, the power of my blade is to make children games real. My Zampa too makes the rules and anyone that step within the boundary of the spiritual pressure is forced to play by the rules, including myself. And what are these rules, said Naruto? Pretty basic actually. If you win, you live. If you lose, you die. He then started to rotate both of his blades as he fired massive wind blades right towards Naruto. The wind blades formed together, forming a spinning tornado that came towards Naruto. Naruto flashed through hand signs. Wind style. Gale palm, he said. A powerful burst of air released from his palm, and it impacted the spinning wind that came towards Naruto as both attacks cancelled each other out. Before Roshin so he could move or anything, Naruto flashed over to him using Sunshin as he brought up his blade to block the massive sword that Naruto brought down. Impressive. He already knows a form of the flash step, and also wind attacks of this world. Let's see how strong and skilled he is with his Zanpakuto then. The two of them clashed violently, their blades hitting against each other creating sparks as they started to litter each other with cuts. Cuts that were none life threatening though. It was like a musical as their blades clack, crackle and sparkle. Shunsui was rather impressed. He had over 100 years of experience in the art of Kinjutsu and yet Naruto was matching him. For blue to blue, it seems that Naruto 3 years of Black Ops and Hunter Nin had turned him into a deadly swordsman. Shunsu raised his blades as Naruto dropped the massive blade on top of them, the groan crack under Shunsu's feet. He could swear that his bones were creaking under Naruto's blade as Naruto was channeling Chakra to increase the weight that came down on the man. He shifted his blade as he made Naruto's blade slip off their side as he jumped away. Boom! The crown was erupted as the force that Naruto slammed into it with was deadly. Shunsui used the smoke to flash behind Naruto as he thrust one of his blades forward, hoping to end this fight quickly. However, he was shocked when Naruto grabbed the blade with his bare left hand and held it there. Ignoring the pain, Naruto yanked the blade forward, pulling the captain forward. As Naruto then planted his left foot and brought his blade around, Shunsui knew that he had a problem in the moment Naruto grabbed onto his blade and started the pull. He quickly brought his other blade around in the nick of time as he blocked Naruto's strike. As Naruto then increased his blade even more with Chakra, as he started putting enormous strength, tried to overpower him with strength alone. For his part, Shunsui decided he has seen enough and knew it was time for Naruto to test to begin. As the fight progressed, Shunsui started to get sluggish and he was only defending at this point. Every time, he tried to go on the offensive, Naruto pushed him back in defensive as Naruto started to litter him with cuts over his arms and his chest. Finally, he got too slow to dodge as Naruto drive 
and his own puck toe stabbed right into the man's shoulder. Sean Swift fell down to one knee as he held his other blade in his hand up. As Naruto turned and knocked the blade away. Finish it, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. I told you the rules at the start. If you win, you live. If you lose, you die. You won. I've lost. Now strike me down and be done with it. Naruto ripped the Zanpak toe out of his shoulder as the man grunted in pain. As Naruto raised his blade high in the sky. As Shunsui closed his eyes. As Naruto brought it down. Boom! Shunsui slowly opened his eyes as he saw that the blade was embedded right beside him. No, said Naruto. I'm not gonna kill you. I have no reason to kill you. And if you bring up that bullshit about the rules of the game, I don't really give a damn. I'm not just gonna kill anyone just because of a bunch of stupid rules, so you have to. Shun Tsui smiles, he got to his feet, as the wounds that were on his person was healing at a rapid rate. Congratulations, Naruto Uzumaki Namikaze. You were the first to figure out the true meaning of this test, and only the second man to survive the first trial. He returned his blades back to normal and sheathed them, as he saw the confused look on Naruto's face. The test is over. You show yourself to be your own master. Well done. You say I'm the first to pass this trial, but the second to survive it. Who was the first to survive it? The first was the former owner of your blade, Sabuza. He was able to realize that he was his own master, but he could never figure out the second part of the test. You see, the opportunity was given for you to strike me down, but yet you did not. You spear me. And that show, a true warrior of justice, one that doesn't just follow rules like an obedient lapdog. Unfortunately though, Zabuza. Love the opportunity to spill blood, always. So when that part of the test came, he took it over and over again, failing each time. The man then offered Naruto his hand, surprising Naruto. If it wouldn't trouble you, I'd like to accompany you back to the world of living, if not as a mentor, then as an ally. As Naruto was surprised, you mean you'd be willing to join me in my party and share in my goals? As Shonsui nodded, if they're worthy, then I'll be honored. Lend my sword not only to you, but to your comrades as well. Besides, I've been cooped up on this island in this dimension for God knows how long. And if I don't see a woman again soon, then I'm gonna go nuts! As Naruto chuckled at that as he took the extended hand. Then welcome to Team Fox, Shunsui. The moment he took hands, a portal appeared behind Naruto. As another one appeared behind Shunsui. The one behind Naruto was black, but the one behind Shunsui was white. Purest white. The portal you see behind me is the one to return back to the old man's place. I will inform your friends because that portal behind you lead to a second trial. As he stepped one foot back into the white. I wish you luck on your second trial, Naruto, he said. As he gave Naruto a nod, as Naruto nodded back, and he was gone in a flash of light. As Naruto looked into the darkness, as he made his way off, wondering what next trial had to offer. Meanwhile, Sneve was massaging her forehead. To release the headache that she has gotten in the past two hours. Emissary from the Hayuga and Inuzaka have raised their voice. To further complicate the matters, the Haruna family and the Yamanaka clan had weighed in for their missing children. And while they had been respectful to ask for Snavi help to find them, the Hayuga and the Inuzakas had demanded of Snavi to make sure she do something to ensure the return of their missing clan members. After listening to the shouts, the squabbles for the past two hours, she lost her patience rather quickly. She informed them she would send out two of her finest Jonins to bring back their members, as she ordered them all to go home. As she was currently looking over the list, as she saw the two Jonins that she wanted to send out, and considering who these two Jonins were, it would be perfect for the mission considering their relationship with the AWOL missing names. She would get to them first thing in the morning. It was late, and. There was only one thing that could soothe her headache, and that was her sake. Time skip. The next morning, as Kern and I waited patiently, although she was growing rather irritated as a minute passed, the subject of her irritation was one Tekashi Hatake. It wasn't that he was a bad person or that his attitude was annoying to Kern. I. No, the main cause of her ire was him reading that perverted novel, no matter who he was around. Women, children, it didn't matter who was in his presence. He would just continue to read his smut, oblivious to anyone that might be offended by his smut. And nothing got under Kurnai's skin more so 
and perverted behavior. Just as she was about to tell a giggling Kakashi to put his book away, Snaddy walked into the office and beat her to it. Kakashi, put that damn book away before I ban its possession in this village. Kakashi pulled the book to his chest as he stammered in disbelief. I do not want Jiraiya legacy to be tied down to those damn books of his. His legacy should be him looking down from the heavens and seeing his last pupil becoming Hokage. The mood in the room after she said that became somber. I understand Hokage-sama, said Kakashi, as he put away the book, taking a moment to calm down. As her emotions got riled up there, Snelly sat down in her chair. Now I've called the boat for here to assign you to a missing in. Retrieval mission, she said. The both of you are two of my finest Jonins, and because of your personal relationship you have with these missing names, I feel like you have a best chance of succeeding to bring them all back. Kekashi and Kurnai looked at each other confused, before turning back to Snaddy. Who are these missing names you speak of, Hokage-sama? The mission I'm sending you to on is to retrieve some of your wayward students. Kekashi scratched the back of his head. Our students? We... Kurnai finished for him. We haven't had students since Team 7 and 8 disassembled a few years ago. Well, officially, they may no longer be your students, but can two of you really say that when you look upon them, you no longer consider them your students? The both of them knew that she was right, as Snelly continued on. The reason why the both of you are here is because you have two former students who are AWOL away from the village at the moment, and if they are not found soon, thanks to the damn council, I may have to issue them a missing name. And you both know how that will go, she said. The both of them were shocked by that, knowing the ramifications of that order. I have already done this to one of them because of the council, although it has broken my heart to do so. I don't want to do it for the others because if I do, it will be my last official act as Hokage of this village. Who's missing Hokage-sama? Kurnai asked, her voice ringing with apprehension. You both know that Naruto left the village three weeks ago. When that happened, I sent Team Asuma in Shikocho after him. I figured Shikamaru would be able to deduce where Naruto might go, and I was correct. They found him and they engaged him in battle. They were soundly defeated. Kurnai stiffened slightly at the mention of Asuma's name. They had only just begun dating when he lost his life as a member of the Yakaski named Hidan. She missed him a great lot and wondered what could have developed between them if they had some more time together. She was broken from her thoughts and Kakashi spoke up. How badly were they hurt, Okagasama? He said. Surprisingly, or maybe not, they did not suffer any major injuries. Choji was worse off, but only because he attempted to kill Naruto when he thought Naruto had killed Shikamaru. Apparently, Naruto had no desire to hurt or kill any of them, because if he wanted to, he could have killed all of them, according to Shikamaru. He's that strong? said Kurnai. Kakashi merely nodded as Snedi continued on. After that incident, I recall Team Guy, who I've sent out to find Naruto. Less. They got injured trying to apprehend him as well. It's after this, several members of both your team start to go AWOL. Who? Both of them asked Nunesend. Well, first it was Hinata. Apparently, life of a Inuzaka was not appealing to her. Give the note that she left for Kiba. What did he say, Hokage-sama? Kurna instantly asked. What you would expect from Hinata? That she tried to make the marriage work. And she did love Kiba but only as a friend. She blamed herself for not standing up to her family and going through the arranged marriage. She knew her leaving would cause Kiba pain and she prayed that he could forgive her. But she must find the one man that has held her heart all these years and try if she can bring him home. However, if she can't, she would not be returning either, etc, etc. As Kurnai had a strange look on her face. So, she continued to lie even in her farewell note. Snaddy raised eyebrow at that. What do you mean, Kurnai? Kurnai crimson eyes narrowed as her face tightened in anger. What I mean is, her marriage was a sham from the very beginning. I know how much she loved Naruto three years ago. And... She would never betray Naruto unless her father forced her to. I remember questioning her. All she said was that she had no choice, but she never elaborated. The pressure Hayashi and her clan put on her for that marriage was tremendous. But Kiba, as she clenched her fists, was under no such pressure at all. He knew. He knew that she had feelings for Naruto. He knew that she loved Naruto. But he still went through with it. Knowing that it would hurt her more than make her feel joy. I am most disappointed with Kiba for doing that to her. I couldn't understand why he did that, knowing his marriage caused her pain, but yet he still went through with it. I'm surprised that she went three years. 
I know how miserable she had been, despite the facade that she put up. The timing of her departure was curious, considering that her sister Hanabi and Konohamaru were married just two weeks ago, said Snelly. As she spoke about the second part of the tale, speaking of Kiba, before you start this mission, you might want to talk to your lone remaining student, Shino. According to Shino, Kiba is not handling Hinata, leaving very well. Apparently, they exchanged some words before he left the village to retrieve his wife. I shall, Hokage-sama, said Kurnai. I already know about Naruto Hokage-sama, said Kakashi. Which of my other students is missing, or is the both of them, Sakura we suspect, left? Before Kiba did to go after Naruto, as for Sasuke, he begged me, let him go and find Naruto so I send him on a mission to retrieve him within two weeks. And, said Kakashi, as it seemed like there was more. That two week time period ended over a week ago, and I told Sasuke if he was unable to accomplish his task, that order changed from a retrieval to a capture. As Snavi was hesitant to say it, or kill, if it comes to it, she said, as she lowered her head. You did what? said Kakashi as he got out of his chair. Snavi fist clenched as she got up as well. You think I wanted to? she said. But as long as Naruto has a key with seal inside of him, he's a dangerous threat to our village, but more importantly, he's a danger to himself out there. Madara Uchi and the rest of the Akaskis are still out there trying to capture Naruto, and we cannot let them get a hold of the Kayube. You know what will be done if they do. Naruto will be killed anyway, and they will have the most powerful Biju at your disposal, she said. As Kakashi saw the tears in her eyes, he knew what she had ordered was killing her on the inside. As much as he wanted to go against her argument, he found that he could not. As his hands dropped to his sides, he sat down. I understand, Hokage-sama, he said. I hope so, Kakashi, because I'm giving you the same order. Unless you can bring Naruto back alive. There's only one other way. He has to be eliminated, she said. Kakashi looked at her with shock and anger that she would give him that order as well. As he gripped his fist tightly, keeping his killing intent in check. Yes, Hokage-sama, he said. Snedi knew Kakashi hated her at that moment, and she didn't blame him, not one bit. But she had a duty to perform as a Hokage to protect his village against any threat. She just never thought that threat would come from Naruto himself. As she dismissed the both of them, she didn't remember. Oh, I almost forgot. I was so focused on your students. Inu Yamanaka went AWOL a few hours after Kiba did. So she's out there as well. So bring her back as well. Kurunari is the eyebrow. Inu? Why would she be searching for Naruto? I don't know for sure, but I suspect it's for the same reason as Hinata and Sakura. Understood Hokage-sama, said Kurenai. The both of them left. Meanwhile, Ino was amazed at how effortlessly Sasuke was still jumping from tree branch to tree branch. Kami, how can he keep on going? They have been traveling most of the morning, and even though she had improved her physical skills from the younger days, she was still slowing down. As she looked up toward the sun, she didn't know it was midday, as she called out to Sasuke. Sasuke, it's midday. Can we take a short break and have some lunch, she said. Sasuke looked at the sky, as he looked around and pointed toward a small hill by the creek. A moment later, they sat down in the clearing. As they broke with their field rations and eat quietly, both of them were thinking about the same person, Naruto. After Sasuke was finished, he pulled out his blade, as he was examining it with a keen eye, like he was looking for something. Her inquisitive nature came out. I don't remember you carrying a sword like that, Sasuke. Is that new? She asks. It's not a sword, but it's a Zanpakuto, and yes, it is new. It looks very old, she said. Where did you get it? It is old, yes, and very powerful as well. I just recently acquired it from a man called Byakuya, Kuchke. The Kuchke clan. I've heard stories about them. They belong to that soul society cult, and supposedly hunt down these demon things. A perplexed look came on Ino's face. But why do you need a weapon that kills demons? Sasuke glanced into her eyes for a moment before he turned his head. He then went silent. Ino's eyes then went wide. No, it can't be. She rose to her feet. You lying bastard. You told me that you were here looking for him the same as me. But you're not, are you? He opened his mouth to speak, but she spoke before him. You just want to find him so you can kill him. That's not true, said Sasuke, I swear it. I'm here under orders from the Hokage. To find Naruto and bring him back to Kanoha, Sasuke said. Then why do you need for the sword, Ino asked. 
and she was not convinced one bit. He clenched his fists. I need this story because if I'm unable to convince Naruto to return, I have to eliminate him. It was the orders from the Hokage. Ino shook her head in disbelief. No, no. That old hag wouldn't order that. She loved Naruto. And you of all people to do it. Haven't you already hurt Naruto enough in your life, Sasuke? She has no choice, Ino. And yes, I know about the pain I've inflicted on Naruto. From my desertion to our fight at the Valley of the Inn. To our numerous battles. When I stabbed him with my shadow right through his chest. Until the final one where he was able to bring me back home. I know. I know I caused him a great deal amount of pain. You idiot, you're just talking about physical pain. And I'm sure that Naruto forget that a long time ago. You neglected to mention that you crushed his heart to pieces when you came back. Sasuke was taken aback. What What are you talking about? Ino slapped him across the face. Don't play dumb with me, Sasuke. You and Sakura did a number on him when you returned. If it hadn't been for Hinata to pick up the pieces, he would have probably left the village a long time before this. What Sakura and I did? As Ino looked at him with disbelief, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Damn it, no I don't. Tell me, what the hell did we do to Naruto? Well, you want to know. You took your best friend girlfriend from him. The day he was going to ask her to marry him. That's what you did, Sasuke. Sasuke looked at her confused. G girlfriend You mean Sakura? No, that can't be right. Sakura told me that you were just friends. When I returned. Friends? <laughs> they dated for almost three years before you came back, Sasuke, she said. No, you're lying. I am not, she shouted. They started the date. After he came back from his training with Jiraiya Sama. Believe me, I know I had to listen to Sakura for three years. Telling me how wonderful Naruto was. And how much he loved him. And how much he loved her back. Sasuke refused to believe that she shook his head no. That that can't be true. She told me that she only loved me. And she waited for my return. Huh, <laughs> if that's true. Then I guess Naruto wasn't the only one that she played for a fool. I still remember the very day. That you and Forehead destroyed him. I was working in the hospital that day. I remember it like it was just yesterday. He came in and showed me that engagement ring that he bought for her. It was a week after he brought you back and you were still recovering from your injuries. He wanted my opinion if she was gonna like the ring or not. It was a beautiful ring by the way. I have no idea where he got it but it had a pink view to it. Sakura would have loved it. I then remember he asked me where she was. He wanted to ask her right away. I remember telling him that she was in your room. You know what his words were. I remember them. Awesome. I can ask Sakura Chan to be my wife and the teen to be my best man at my wedding. I then watched him run down the hall with a smile on his face. He had opened the door to your room, but he never went in. A horrified guilt sort of pressed in Sasuke's stomach, twisting and turning it. His face was so blank as he just stood there. He then closed the door and dropped something to a nearby waste basket and left. I was so confused I made my way down there and realized it was a ring that he threw away. I was so confused until I slowly opened your door and the reason why none of you noticed is because she was bouncing up and down your midsection like the whore that she was and Naruto left with a heartbroken expression on his face. So there you have it Sasuke. I'm sure rushing door to the chest is quite painful but it is nothing compared to the pain that he went through that day. Nothing at all. When he saw his supposed best friend and brother having sex with the girl that he had loved his entire life, the same girl he said he wanted to spend the rest of his life with, Sasuke dropped to his knees as the memories of that day came back to his mind. He had been in the hospital recovering from the wounds that he had received in their final battle. Nur the healing powers allow him to recover much faster. He remembers Sakura taking care of him practically 24 hours a day that week he started to notice of her she was no longer the weak teenager that he left on the bench that day she had changed into a grown woman during that week the possibility of being more than friends with her started to plague his mind eventually he asked her to be his girlfriend but he had wondered about their relationship her and Naruto since he has been gone but she said that they were nothing but friends he remembered her squealing with delight and kissing him after, he asked her to become his girlfriend, and the rest was described by Ino. Ino understood what Neji meant by him and Sakura hurt Naruto as well. I, I didn't know Ino. 
I swear I would have never done that route if I had known. It all makes sense now. I wonder why he avoided us after. We became a couple. I wanted to ask him but Sokka convinced me that he was just being childish because of his silly crush on her when they were younger. And she told me that he would get over it. I thought that she was right because after a few months, he started to interact with us once again. Why would he do that after what we did to him? And why didn't anyone tell me about the both of them? The answer to your first question is Hinata. She found the courage and told him that she had feelings for him the entire time. And Hinata would never use Naruto, like the way Sakura did, a replacement tool for herself until you return. She healed him. Eventually we start to see him around once again. I remember, said Sasuke. It was the first time we have seen him in a year since I came back and I saw him in the park holding hands with Hinata. I remember congratulating him when I heard that they were dating. I now understood why. Hinata and Sakura seemed so angry at each other. Not to mention why the mood turned sour when I suggest we go on a double date. The pieces were falling into place and they were not forming a pretty picture at all. He had laughed it off and he made some excuse that he had to be somewhere. I should have known that something was up when Sakura started to complain about Naruto being in Hinata the entire day. I was such a fool. But why didn't anyone tell me? Well, I'm not surprised, said Ino. The thought of Naruto being actually taken probably got on her nerves somehow. Because she wants to be with you and have Naruto pining after her the rest of his life. And the reason anyone didn't tell you is because Naruto asked us not to. What? what? Why would he do that? He said he didn't want you to know because he wanted to see you happy, Sasuke. And if Sakura made you happy, he didn't want to ruin it. He also said what happened in the past did not matter anymore. He had found Hinata and two of them were in love. And they will be for the rest of their life. And then you know about the tragedy of what happened to them. A few years later, Sasuke sighed. He knew quite well. So tell me, after all of this, are you still planning to kill Naruto? Even if you are ordered to do so, she asks. Sasuke pays her own. I, I don't know, he said. When the time comes, and I see him, I'll make my decision, but I can not promise you anything. As Eno lost it, I won't let you hurt him as she tackled him down to the ground. As she tried to hold his arms down. Screw you, Sasuke said in anger as he looked at her. You're out here, talking about the pain that we've inflicted on Naruto. What about what you did to him? Ino looked down, right into his eyes. Screw you too. You think I don't know that? I was a part of the reason. Why? He became like this. After Hinata married Kiba. I tried to help him. For a year, we became close. To the point where things happened between us. That both of us realized we had feelings for each other. And we started to go out. But then I was given a choice and I chose wrong. And I've hated myself ever since. Because I made a stupid, dumb decision back then. But you, after everything you still want to go after him. Orders or not, you will not hurt him, she said. But guys, to be in subscribe right here. If you want to see sports and do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification as I posted. But more for now, see you guys soon. Peace.